A number of viewers have been asking me how I make my video thumbnails for YouTube. Well, if you're that interested, I'll show you. Right after this. Media. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Media Channel. I'm your host, William Hugh. And yes, in this episode, I will be showing you how to make YouTube video thumbnails. And if you want to copy the method, then you are going to need a photo editor handy. Any photo editor will do the job, but the one I'll be using in the demo is called Paint.net. Now it's an open source program, which means it's absolutely free for anybody to download and use. And if you want to copy yourself, you can download it from this link here, which I'll also put in the description below. So. Has everybody got their photo editor then? Good, then this is what we do. Before we start, let's collect some images for use in the thumbnail. Now, as we are going to be using the thumbnail on YouTube, it would be best to make sure that the images are Creative Commons and copyright free. So I'm going to use a specialized search engine called CC Search, and this will find the copyright free images for us. And here's the website. OK, so the first thing I need is a background. So I'll just type thumbnail background in here and just make sure that both the use for commercial purposes and the modify, adapt or build upon boxes are ticked before you search. Now I can search any of these sources, but I'm going to use Google Image. So I click and here are the results, which as you can see are all available for reuse and modification. So let's see what they've got. This one looks good, so I'll click to view the image and then right click and save image as and I'm going to save it in my desktop in a folder I've already prepared called thumbnail image. Click save and there we go. The next image I need is a video play button and I'd like it to have a transparent background. So this time we're looking for PNG images. So back to CC search and do a search for video play button transparent PNG. And we'll try Google Images again. Right, well this one looks good, so I'll click on it to view the image a wee bit closer. And yes, the telltale checkerboard background shows it is indeed a transparent image. So right click, and once again save to my thumbnail folder. And I need just one more image, a pointing hand. And again, I'd like a transparent background, so I'll just modify the search, like this. And off we go again. Hmm. Now this one looks a likely candidate. And with a closer look, we can see the checkerboard background is there. So right click and save to our folder. And there we have it. So with all our images ready, let's make a thumbnail. First of all, of course, we open paint.net and we drag in our chosen background and just click here to open it in the editor. Now it's a little big, so we'll adjust the view with the zoom control here. That's better. So there's our background. Now the first thing I want to add is the lettering, but I'm going to do it in layers, which will make it much easier to adjust things later. So first, I'm going to come up here and add a new layer, which as you can see, has been added on the top of the background here. You can think of layers as clear see-through sheets laid on top of each other, and you can modify any one of these layers without affecting any of the others. So I'm going to put my first line of lettering on this clear layer. Now I've already got a nice yellow selected, so I'll just come up to the tool selector here and choose text. The text size is on 192 at the moment, and the font is on ethnocentric. You can, of course, choose any font and size you like, but I'm going to stick with these for now. So I'll just click on the layer and type my first line, which is obviously way too big. So I'll just bump that down to a smaller size and then roughly place the text. We'll fine tune it later. OK, now before my next line of text, I'm going to add a new layer and this will allow me to adjust each line of text separately later on. So add layer and we see it added in the indicator box here. Now, making sure that text and its options are selected, I'll add my second line. And I think I can afford to make the text a little bit bigger this time. And again, roughly place the text. That should do. 
and now rinse and repeat for the final line. Add a new layer, here it is, and making sure text is selected, add the final line. Ok, now you're going to see why we used layers. Go to the layer box and select the first layer we added, for the first line of text. Now choose Rectangle Select, this will only affect the selected layer, i.e. the first line of text, and select it like this. Once selected, choose Move Selected Pixels. You will now be able to move and stretch the selection box, allowing you to place, shape and compose your text perfectly. There, that looks about right. And when you are satisfied, just click Rectangle Select and click anywhere on the image to deselect. You can now select the next layer, and basically rinse and repeat to compose the next line of text. Now I'm going to give this one a little bit of height, but I am going to leave a little bit of space at the end for the images I downloaded earlier. And of course we do it once again on the next layer to finish the composition of the text. Now just deselect, and that looks fine. Now for the images. First, I'm going to drag in and drop the video play button with the transparent background. But this time, I'm not going to click open. Instead, I'm going to choose add layer, which will add the image as another layer. And there it is. As you can see, it's already selected. So I'm just going to click on the move selected pixels, and that will allow me to move, size and place the image anyhow I like. That looks about right. Now you've probably noticed that the image is obscuring some of the letters, but with layers that's no problem. Because if we come to the layer box here, we can simply drag the image layers below the layer of the lettering, like this. Aren't layers brilliant? And now to drag the final image in. And again, I'm going to add it as a layer. Once again, it's already selected, so I just choose Move Selected Pixels, which allows me once again to move and arrange the image. And you'll notice that placing your cursor outside the corner points, like this, allows you to rotate the image as well. There we go, all done. So, just deselect, and I think that looks fine. So I'll save the finished piece by choosing Save As, and I'm going to place it on my desktop, and I'll give it a name, Thumb Image, and I'm going to save it as a JPEG picture file. Then click Save, choose the quality you require, I always prefer 100%, and click OK. Paint will then inform you that all the layers are going to be flattened into one picture. Just click on this, and your thumbnail is saved. And there it is. So there you go, custom made thumbnails as easy as that. Hope it was useful to you. And if it was, why not drop us a thumbs up? And if you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe thingy down there. Because that way, I'll see you here next time, and every time, on, on the, the Media, Media Channel. Channel.